Uh, welcome to the second video for uh, the last tutorial bit. This is where I'm going to show you how to run a uh, regression. And so things we've already covered in the last video, we've um, talked about how you would select on a province for a cross tab and how you would set things up for a control variable and things. And we built this party identification variable. Uh, okay. And so what I want to do where we finished off was like how we actually did um, this vote choice for like if it was in Quebec uh, with party ID or if it was outside of Quebec. Uh, now what I want to do is I actually want to show you what a regression looks like um, on one of these leader evaluation ratings, right? So here we've got the how do you feel about federal party leaders below and we've got 23 is Trudeau and you can see that there's like it's one of these 0 to 100 scales. Yeah, let me just go and find what this looks like in the code book. Boop, boop, boop. There we are. So it's this set of questions here, uh, the leader ratings. Like, how do you feel about these ones? Zero is like, you really dislike them. 100 means that you really like them, so on and so forth. So we're going to treat this like a interval variable. Zero is like, I hate him. 100 is, I like him. You can see in the frequency distribution, I've got like one in five or so that's saying, I really dislike the guy. Uh, and then I've got about like, four or five percent saying I think he's amazing okay so what I want to do is I want to put into a regression like what partisanship does to how people rate um, somebody like their party leader and so in order for me to be able to do that what I have to do is take this party ID variable and make them into dummy variables so this is what I've done here I've got I'm making like a variable a new variable that's called the liberals and it's going to be my party ID variable but what I do is I recode it so that the liberals stay one and then everybody else is a zero. Same thing with conservatives. I make my conservative party ID uh, and then it's the like the zeros and the ones are zeros. Just the twos are the ones and everybody else is a zero and I've got the NDP. There we are. Uh, and then I've got um, the NDP there. Okay, so here I've got, I want to tab, there's my party ID variable. I'm going to tab my dummies. So here you can see I've got like 1,377 liberals in my party ID variable, but in the dummy, I've got my 1,377 in there. And they all have the same N, this 4870, same number of cases, but like my 1,243 conservatives are now in the dummy variable, and then my 480 New Democrats are in the, yeah, in the NDP variable. So what this means is that, like, if I'm gonna put into a regression, uh, this leader rating thing uh, with these three, like with these partisans, it means that I can get a really great regression. It's amazing. So the constant is telling me that like for everybody who is like basically when um, all the party IDs are zero. So these are people who identify with the block. These are people who identify with a minor party. These are people who like don't identify with any party at all. It's basically anybody who's not a liberal, not a conservative, and not a new Democrat, their average rating of Justin Trudeau is yeah, about 40 points on that zero to 100 point scale. Uh, this is how we would interpret it. You've got like, uh, being a liberal moves you 37 points on that zero to 100 scale. Uh, and it moves you up positive. So if you're a liberal, your, your evaluation of Trudeau is like super high compared to other folks. If you're a conservative, your evaluation of Trudeau is super low. So being a conservative compared to people who like don't identify with any of those parties or identify with a minor party, things along those lines, they're rating Trudeau like almost 27 points lower. Uh, and then you got the NDP and it's like an eight point effect there. Okay, so, and you can see, like, the progression is significant. I'm explaining almost 50% of the variance. Uh, and I can, like, account for how this is all happening together at the same time. It's pretty neat uh, in that respect. Now, the one thing I want to show you, though, is what do we do with the fact that we are dealing with survey data and weights? So this comes clue through pretty clearly in the video for next week's material, but... The Canadian election study is something called a disproportionate stratified random sample. So the, here we go, the CES is a, oopsies, is a disproportionate stratified random sample. So what this means is that, like, it's a randomly selected sample, which is fine. Uh, but what this election study team has done is they typically make a point of oversampling or, like, deliberately sampling to make sure that they've got enough people from various places. And the two 
uh, big oversamples that the election study has historically done is for Quebec to make sure that they've got a, enough participants from Quebec to actually do a meaningful analysis about what's going on with vote choice there because, you know, different parties, right? Uh, and then the other thing that they tend, the other group they tend to oversample sometimes are youth aged 18 to 24 or like really young folks just because Elections Canada wants to know what's going on with that group and so Elections Canada is a partner for the Canadian election study. Um, so given that, um, we know that the, um, sample is, uh, yeah, there are some groups that are like overrepresented in it and underrepresented in it. So afterwards, what we have to do is correct for this statistically. And so one of the things that we can do with that is using a weight. And so I'm just going to do the weight there. And what this does in the health command, it's telling you what your weight options are. Uh, so it says state allowance for four kinds of weights. Um, we wouldn't use an F weight. That's not what we want is this P weight, a sampling weight. Um, and so this is the, like the inverse of the probability of the observation is included because of a sampling design. So literally what the P weight is basically saying is that you've made some sampling design choices and you've had good reasons to do for it. And we're going to correct it using this P weights. You've got A weights and I weights, but for me, the most important thing to use here is a P weight. So if I'm going to add this to my regression, this is how I do it. Same thing, square bracket P weight, oops, spelling it correctly, equals this weight here. So I'm going to use the general weight for the Canadian election study, square bracket. And then you'll notice like what's changed between like putting the weight on versus not. Uh, first things first, I can see that my R squared has reduced a little bit, right? So what I'm explaining has decreased. So I'm gone from like almost 47% of the variance to like almost 43. The coefficients have remained pretty stable though, <sighs> sort of. So the, the effect for the liberals uh, with the weight on, it's still almost like 38 points. And so like being a liberal partisan means that your um, rating of Justin Trudeau is like, like just being like a liberal versus not um, in, increases your rating of Justin Trudeau on that zero to 100 point scale by like 38 points. And it doesn't really affect the like conservative one quite as much, but like it's been a minor change. And then you've got the NDP. So the NDP one is the one that's actually changed the most, gone from like 0.8 to 0.65. Um, yeah. So typically what we would almost always advises that you must always use the weight. And if you read the technical documentation for the election study, like usually, usually we must always use the weight. So why am I not telling you to do it for cross tabs? So if you're sitting there, like, so for grad students, like you should know the data set that you're using. If you're using the Canadian election study, you need to use a weight. Um, if you're using different data, you should read to see whether or not you need to use the weight. But if the data that you're using is from StatsCan, like Statistics Canada or something along those lines, you probably don't need to. But it would be good just to check to see if the data set that you're using has a weight and like the documentation if they tell you what kind of weight to use. Uh, okay, so how would we use this with a cross tab? Uh, you can use a command called SBY set, and then it would again be like, the same thing, p weight equals this. And then you just do SVY tab. And here I want to do, um, where is it? Vote choice. Here, I'll just do my party ID vote choice thing. Okay. So. Let's just bring up that cross tab again, just to remember what it looks like. So here I've got my unweighted cross tab. We expected to see something similar. So I've got my counts, like all the liberals are voting liberals, but sometimes NDP, all the conservatives are voting conservative and like new Democrats are mostly voting NDP, but like some of them are not, they're voting liberal. So this is what the unweighted cross tab looks like. I can do the this is basically telling stated, use this weight, like set it up this way. And then it's just like with the survey weight on, that's what the SVY colon means, tab the cross tab. So what happens if I try to run this? It tells me I can't run chi-square. So let me take out chi-square. 
run it that way. It tells me I'm not allowed to run Kramer's V either. Uh, let me run it this way. So without those, then it runs, but I've only got percentages. I don't have counts. So I'm gonna try to see if it'll let me put like my actual survey counts in there. And there it does. Okay. So here again, this isn't changing too much. It's not changing too much, but you'll notice like what I'm permitted to do is I'm permitted to like reproduce the cross tab there. Uh, and I will always, even if I don't call for chi-square, I'm getting some kind of measure of association. So I've got an uncorrected chi-square. So chi-square is still there. Uh, and I'm still getting the measure of statistical significance, but I'm not getting a measure of, um, uh, I'm not getting a measure of association. And this is the reason why I'm not asking undergrads to use survey weights, even though you really probably should, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, it's because you actually can't get like your measure of association. The reason why Stata used to in earlier versions and now the things that they're going to be telling us to do is like stop running cross tabs, run regressions instead. And they're not wrong. They're not wrong, but like you need to walk before you can run with this stuff. And so that's why we just want you to like be aware that the weights are a thing and that you should be using them, but like we need you to do your measure of association. So that's why you're not using the weights. But I do want to like show you what it might look like in terms of um, uh, how the weight will change things. So I'm going to do CBS 19 age. Let me just do age and vote choice, right? So like so, I've got my age variable where it's 18 to 99 and where are my categories? So I'm going to do like 18 to 40, 41 to... 59 and then 60 plus. Okay, so I'm going to do gen age equals CPA. Oopsies. Let's see if I can get this done before my computer dies. Probably not. Okay, gen age equals CPS 19 underscore age. Recode age. What did I say? 18 to 49 equals 1. Oopsies. 50. What did I say? No, it can't be 18 to 49. It'd be 18 to 40, sorry, 40. And then it's going to be 41 through 59. That's right, equals two. And then it's 60 through 99 equals three. Okay, tab age, there we are. That's okay. Um, label define age one equals younger two is middle, three is older. Label values, age, age, tab, age. Okay, boop. Okay, let me do this tab vote choice, age, call chi v. Tells me the relationship's pretty weak. Oh, hold on, if, PES 19 province equals not Quebec. Here. Yeah, look at that. I've just, I'm below, like I can squeak through the threshold there. Um, but if I'm looking at this, like I, it's not a curve, it's a curve linear relationship for the liberals for sure, right? Uh, what does this look like with the weight? I want call count. Okay. It still curves. Um, so it's still like a linear relationship, but like I'm getting some minor adjustments, right? Like I'm getting, it's changing things around a little bit. And so that's the thing, like the weight corrects for like challenges with the sample. And so it's important to keep in mind that normally the best practice is that we would put the weight on for these data. And we would almost like the idea that we, could, we couldn't publish from the election study without having the weight on, right? Uh, super easy to just throw it on in a regression. The cross tabs make it a lot more difficult, which is why we don't do them. Um, but yeah, you should be aware of like the weights are there. And yeah, especially if you're a grad student using the CES, this is what you should be doing here, right? Run a regression, DV, IV, 
and then make sure that you've got the weights. Oopsies, how did I manage that? Make sure that you have the weight on. Okay, happy to answer questions uh, in email or in tutorial, but like that's it. There you go. Now you know how to run a regression and put a weight on.